it's all about context. For example, think about a game in which you were playing, Will, and somebody's got video of it. And it looks like it. they could take a small clip out of context and look like you're actually tripping the guy intentionally, right? As opposed to, well, no, let's put it in context and realize you got hit by another guy, which bumped you into this guy. You, you weren't doing it intentionally. It was an accident. But if I just cut that clip, it looks like you're doing that. And that's the whole problem when you see these lists with BuzzFeed and stuff like that. They, they don't understand. It is so important to set context. I'll give you an example. Hmm. Uh, I used to, uh, some of the interviews I did were people that were going to go to prison for the rest of their lives. You know, when I was investigating homicides, things like that, or when I was teaching out at the National Security Agency, we were teaching damage assessment agents, people who investigated the impact that espionage had on the United States, but people who had investigated the Alder James case, uh, Edward Earl Edwin Pitts, the, the CIA traders, and uh, Pitts was also an FBI agent who turned bad, Harold James Nicholson, all of these guys. And the one thing about it was, is that unless you understood that, unless you had it in context, your question was irrelevant because you needed to frame the questions in such a way based on the context that then when I saw you react to something, it was what you did before the question, it was what you did during the question, and it's what you did after the question. I'll give you a quick example. I don't want to give away too many state secrets because I don't want people going out and committing <laughs> crimes and you know getting good at lying. Yeah, of course, but, but what you can. Yeah. Here's practical advice, though. For example, let's say that you're uh, hiring somebody for your uh, organization, Will, you know, and you want to bring them on and you want to know, are they being truthful or not? A lot of what you do is you look at their ex. So when people say, well, he scratched his nose, he's lying. Well, it depends. It depends. Scratching your nose can be a sign of deception. It doesn't mean we don't say lying exactly. It's it's you're being deceptive. In other mm. words, there's that's why in court they say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth because those three things mean something. For example, I might be truthful about some things, but not truthful about the others. And here's a perfect example. I say, Will, have you ever um, run a stop sign or sped? And you could you could truthfully answer no because you might have never run a stop sign in your life, never. But you might speed all the time. But because I asked that question back to back, you can truthfully answer that as opposed to, "Well, have you ever run a stop sign?" And then wait for your answer. And then, "Well, have you ever sped?" And then what I'm looking at is your activities before, during, and after. And the great one is with women. When they, people will look at women and say, "Well, she has her arms crossed. She's being deceptive." Well, no, you fool. Is the room cold? That's what I found a lot of times when the room gets cold, what do you do? You cross your arms. So you set a baseline for your interview and you understand how are they reacting? What questions are they saying? Then when I ask you, I'm looking for certain things. I'll get, here's an easy one. One of the ways guys stall for time to think about an answer, I might say, Will, have you ever, uh, have you ever driven over uh, you know, 100 miles an hour? And, and you might do something like, what, have I ever driven over 100 miles an hour? You repeat the question back. Or... Yeah. Guys cough and then they reach down and they pull up their socks. Believe it or not, guys will reach down to pull up their <laughs> socks because it's a delaying tactic. Okay. You're trying to think of the yeah. answer. And one of those things comes across when I'm uh, accusing mm -hmm. somebody of a crime. Like I might say, you know, I might be talking to Joe Bob, the farmer, and I say, Joe Bob, uh, did you rob this bank? You know, or, you know, you know, have you ever robbed a bank? And they might say, I did not rob that bank with this gun. I robbed a different bank with that gun, or I, I robbed this bank, but with a knife or a different gun. But what you're looking for is there, did, did, did he repeat the question? Did he cough? Did he delay? Did he stall? Now, the reason why some people scratch their nose, it's actually a response, capillary response to the constriction of blood. When you're being deceptive and you're manifesting that anxiety inside, you can start, you actually start constricting the blood flow. And one of the, one of the uh, manifestations of a lack of blood flow on your nose is a tingling sensation. That doesn't mean you're being deceptive. It doesn't mean you're lying. It means you're being deceptive about something. So that's where you have to kind of drill down. So during an, and the other thing people get confused about, they always say, well, he interrogated me. No, I interviewed you. There's two different things. There's an interview, which is non-accusatory. Then there's an interrogation, which is accusatory. Uh, right. an, an interview always, uh, 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 an interrogation is always preceded by an interview, but an interview does not always lead to an interrogation. I might interview you and find out based on your answers, your body language, you're fine. And here's a, here's an interesting stat too. The company I was doing this training for when we taught the secret service, FBI, CIA, uh, state and local law enforcement, they did a study with the national security agency years ago and they had 300 cases that they knew the outcomes on not the not the people involved in the in the in the research but the the, the NSA did and what they did is they first what they would do is um, you could um, all you could do was hear you could only hear what was going on then you shut the audio off and then you could only see what was going on then you gave them the audio and the video together then you gave them the audio video and along with the case facts 
And so here's the thing. You know what is the most accurate indicator of uh, deception? It's body language. Mm -hmm. It's not what people say. It's how they react. And so what we found out was that a uh, if you listen to the audio only, you were only accurate about 55 to 58% of the time. Uh, if you saw the body language, you were accurate about 78 to like 82%. If you had the body, like, if you had the audio and video together, you were like at eighty-eight percent. And then, if you had the body language, or you had the audio video along with the case facts, what we found out the final uh, outcome was a properly trained interviewer utilizing both verbal and nonverbal behavior, correctly armed with the case or armed with the case facts, can correctly assess truthful or deceptive behavior ninety-three percent of the time. That is more accurate wow. than a polygraph. Wow.